Oh, it was the uh, the very last second then that I remembered remembered to turn the microphone on. Oh, well, not on, you know, but plug it in and, you know, move it out. What did I say? During the mean whilst. During the mean whilst? No, no, no. That at all. Well, no, no. It is uh, your boy Dexter and me. And um, a, a bit of a different video uh, again this week as I as I struggle to get outdoors to uh, to, to film. A while back, I made uh, I made a film about a fountain pen that I that I really really enjoyed, and that was the um, SBRE Brown model. And I put a link to that to that video um, uh, upstairs. Um, and uh, I use fountain pens, right? I use them every single day. I write uh, in a journal every day. I've kept a journal now for the last nine years. Um, since my my diagnosis I pretty well written uh, every single day in a journal and every day I use a different fountain pen not, not every single day obviously because I'd, I'd have to have like you know thousands of pens but uh, I you know, like I rotate them you know so um, I try and write every day with uh, a, a different pen to the previous day there we are put it that way <laughs> so um, I thought I'd make a video about my about my personal my personal pen uh, collection. Uh, I've got a lot. I've got, uh, hang on a minute, I have to count them a second. Um, there's, uh, one, two, I should have done this before, shouldn't I? Three, six, eight. There's 11 in there. 12 then with the um, the SBRE brown pen. There's another 12 in this uh, little case here. So that's 24. And then I, I got a problem. Um, and then uh, in this little bag, then there's another nine. So I've got 33, 33 fountain pens, uh, which all right, I have amassed over like uh, almost an adult lifetime of of collecting them. Um, but I figured, you know, uh, it might be inter interesting for me to show you my collection and uh, and talk you through some of my favorites so i'm going to start with my oldest pen which is well, the oldest pen to me anyway which is this uh waterman torsard now i think torsard refers to the twisted um pattern in the stainless steel uh barrel and cap now i bought this pen in 1982 uh, to sit my uh, A-level exams with. Uh, so I did those in June of 82. So maybe I bought this in the previous, like, December or something. But uh, And this is the pen that I used for most of my further education um, uh, examinations and, you know, note-taking, things like that. I'd always preferred a fountain pen, and I, I explained by in my my SBRE brown video it's uh, you know they never run out as long as you got a bottle of ink, ink with you you've got you know you've got a pen um so yeah this is the pen that saw me through uh, virtually all of my early early examinations uh you know written exams and then when i started work um in 1980 when did i start work properly 1985 86 um so I, I was working before that, but I was uh, part time in work and part time in like college. Um, I bought this. Um, I think it was a Parker. Where is it? Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Yeah, a Parker Forty Five. Uh, it's a flighter uh, fountain pen. Lovely pen with a a shrouded nib. And that was the pen that saw me through my earliest, you know, working years. And then latterly, uh, when I got a bit of a more senior position. I figured I needed a posher pen, and I bought this Parker, this Parker Sonnet, uh, which is a really professional, you know, traditional-looking stainless steel and gold, but professional-looking pen. Um, and whenever I used to, you know, whip this out in a meeting, um, you know, I, I used to get sort of, uh, well, not admiring glances so much as people, I mean, why is he writing with a fountain pen? <laughs> when other people had, like, you know, 
biros and then uh, even iPads and laptops to take their notes. I was using I was using one of these. Uh, I've also got in this box I got a couple of Twisbees. Oh, and I got a really interesting pen, which is it's called a Monteverde uh, work pen. And now this is a, a fountain pen, but it's also uh, a ruler, a spirit level, uh, a stylus tip, and then inside the stylus tip you've got a little precision flat bay blade and a crosshead screwdriver. So, you know, that is, uh, I don't use this very much, but it is a novelty uh, little thing uh, to have, you know, and to, uh, it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a, a talking point if I'm, you know, uh, showing people my pens. Uh, they're all so excited when I, you know, get my pen collection out and show relatives. Oh dear. In um, in this tub here, then I've got a collection of Lamy safaris. And I started buying these oh, years ago. I, I like quite like the colours, and I've even got a couple of uh, limited edition ones. And there's like this coral one and this petrol uh, thingy one. And they're they're quite expensive now. Some of these um, some of these limited edition pens go for uh, quite a bit of money. But also in this little. Uh, tub of miscellany here i've got um miscellany Mis miscellany Mis miscellaneous pens i've got some of my uh, well all of my chinese my chinese knockoffs really so you've got this this wing sung uh which is like a um a pilot custom uh complete knockoff really you've got this jin hao uh i think it's a jin hao 992 which is a, a sailor 1911 uh, a complete knockoff how, how will they get away with it i do not know but there we are they do and uh, then i got this this is a hero uh, i can't remember the actual uh, model name but it is a parker 51 uh, with you know with like the the hooded nib uh, full-on parker 51 copy again uh, how do they get away with it but perhaps most alarmingly is this Mont Blanc Meisterstück. When I mean this Jin Hao, uh, what's this? A Jin Hao X one five nine, and it's a Meisterstück. Mont Blanc Meisterstück one four nine, complete knockoff. Um, now this pen cost me, and it's even got a number eight nib, right? So it's a nice juicy big nib and feed on it. This pen cost me the princely sum of six pounds fifty. Now if I wanted to buy the uh, Mont Blanc equivalent, it, it's going to be at least Fifth hundred yeah, hundred and fifty times that. Fifteen times hundred no hang on, it's sixteen. Yeah, it's gonna be about a thousand pounds for a Meisterstück, isn't it? So that's a lot more than you know, the six pound fifty that uh, that this cost me. <laughs> um obviously it's not uh, it's not piston fill, you've got like a little blind cap here, but it's you know cartridge converter filled. But all the same, you know, for six pound fifty from a distance, if I put like a little uh Dob a tip X on the on the top there. I'd have a, like a a complete uh, Mont Blanc Meisterstück copy. Now I've got my uh, my colourful pen collection then in this pouch, and um, most of these I bought in a shop called Bartram's in Hay on Wye. Fantastic shop. It's like a stationer's upstairs where they sell you know all sorts you know like paper and you know. Um, uh, all sorts of stuff up there stationers you know it's a stationery shop no it doesn't go anywhere it's a stationery shop and that it sells you know sells office supplies but then downstairs oh yeah it's terrible Down, can you hear that sound that is the sound of of a barrel being scraped <laughs> uh anyway uh in this uh, little pouch then i've got um three uh visconti pens uh, that i really enjoy uh, I've got two Visconti Rembrandts and a Visconti uh, Van, oh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Van Gogh. Um, I think this is the, um, what's this one? I can't remember the name of it now, but they're all named after Van Van Gogh paintings. And um, anyway, yeah, that's that one. Nice, like sort of resin. And then a couple of Rembrandts then. I think this one's called something like a, a Star Starry Night, is it? Or whatever, I, I'm not sure. Oh, that's, no, that is Van Gogh, isn't it? Uh, anyway, this, there's this one. And I've got this lovely uh, red and black example then. And these are really nice pens, these um, Visconti pens with like uh, 
lovely uh, bridge shaped uh, clips then uh, I've got some Conklin's and uh, no, a Conklin is an old American uh, pen maker and they went under years ago but I think somebody then resurrected the brand and uh, the first one I bought was this uh, all-american Yellowstone now this is a lovely lovely looking pen quite a large pen but the finish on it is is gorgeous is is something to behold and then I got a couple of other Conklin's then that I uh, that I bought um, and this side uh, I've got probably my oldest pen not oldest to me but my oldest pen and I think this is a uh, it's a Parker duo fold and I think it's from the 19 uh, 1960s could it even be the 1950s I'm not sure um, but this is a lovely pen this has got um, uh, a proper gold nib on it so this pen flexes beautifully and you get some real like line variation in your writing uh, with this pen it really is a joy a joy to write with uh, this is a limited edition Schaefer uh, with like um, Ferrari branding on it again a really interesting little pen um, this is the second one of these like to, the first one I bought wouldn't write this wouldn't write at all uh, and I mean at all you put ink on it and as soon as that ink uh, dried up from the nib and feed it would not write I think the the, the tipping on the nib had been over polished I think that was the problem but it wouldn't write at all so uh, I had to send that back um, another Parker Sonnet uh, I've got a Lamy. Um, this is one of their aluminium pens, and this is a really nice pen to write with. Probably one of my favourite writing pens. Uh, the nib on it is an absolute delight, even though it is um, an extra fine nib. It is an absolute delight to write with. Talking of line variation, then you got this. I bought this Noodlers. Uh, Noodlers. I think it's called a Noodlers Ahab, and this has got a proper flex nib on it. So again, you can really like, be expressive, expressive with your writing. And last up then is a pen I bought on a recommendation of a channel called Gourmet Pens, I think. Um, and it's a Bennu something, Bennu 88. And again, this is a, a really lovely pen to look at and a gorgeous, gorgeous pen to write with. Uh, nib wise I've got loads I've got um, across this collection from extra fine right through fine medium broad double broad and really triple broad pens then I've got um, 1.1 1 1.5 and 1 1.9 stubs and a couple as I said of um, well one flex nib and one like nice gold nib which flexes naturally because gold is a softer material than uh, than the steel that they use uh, to make pens and now obviously uh, to fill all these pens up then uh, you need ink and I've got a drawer full of the stuff an absolute drawer full with um, let me see I've got inks from who are these Hiroshizuku I think that's is it Pilot yeah Pilot Hiroshizuku from Japan I've got a couple of Lamy inks um, they're quite nice uh, then I've got some uh, Jay Urban uh, small little bottles, uh, a few of those, some diamine inks, they're really nice, really nice inks, diamine, a few of them, and then just general purpose uh, Watermans in all sorts of colours. But my favourite ink is this one, it's the SBRE Brown, Brown, and it comes in this lovely, uh, lovely bottle. Um, where you uh, and I'm not going to uncap it now because this top part is full of ink but um, when you want to fill your pen you turn the bottle upside down good job I didn't uncap it then isn't it? this top part fills with ink there's like a little marble in it then that stops the ink draining back down so you can top your top your pen up uh, with uh, without <laughs> having to dip it into the whole bottle of ink you know and get in the, uh, the section uh, and the um, that sort of grippy bit all covered in all covered in ink right there we are then that is um that is my fountain pen and a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of ink collection uh i hope you found this um interesting <laughs> probably not but you know 
Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, I'll probably never do uh, any more of these uh, fountain pen videos unless you know you want me to talk at length about you know one of these pens. Uh, then uh, let me know. And if you got any questions about you know any of the pens I've shown you today, then uh, you know leave me a question in the comments below, and I'll be only too happy to uh, to ignore to get back to you and uh, and answer answer your query. And um, let me know. Let me know if you are a fountain pen uh, user, lover, aficionado, um, and I'd be interested to know if you are. Uh, what pens, what pens you use? Um, now I'd really like one day to get a you know a Grail pen, a um, you know a, a, a statement pen, an expensive pen. Uh, one day maybe um, I'll get something like uh, an Armando. Um, Simeone uh, Arco um, pen, the, the gorgeous um, Arco finish or Arco uh, material, um, something like one of those, or an, or an old Omas um, pen, but um, they don't make them anymore. Uh, they're out of production. I think Omas are out of business even. Um, so yeah, it's a case of you know scouring, uh, scouring eBay and places like that to try and get a hold of one. Um, yeah, one day, one day when I've saved up enough, I will buy, uh, I will buy my Grail pen. Uh, stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves, your loved ones, your little pets, and just be nice, okay? Uh, be a nice person, and the world will be nice back to you. All right then, uh, we'll see you uh, with a more traditional photography-based video uh, next time around. Tara.